the week 10 Fusion Monday, we got two to do. This first one here is about parameters, which basically allows us to create one drawing and then change its sizes by modifying the parameters. Kind of like think about t-shirts where we can make one t-shirt design and then by simply changing one dimension in a uh, table, we can make extra large, double XL, smalls, extra smalls, all without having to redraw the part multiple times. We're also gonna learn how to make molds, which is how to make a part and then use that part to either add to or subtract from another part in order for us to get um, like a candy mold. So like we could pour chocolate in this candy. So stick around, it's gonna be delicious. Okay, first one we're gonna do is uh, this uh, parameter one. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over to Fusion. The whole idea with parameters is allows us to change its size by adjusting the table. Now I have here set up parameters, this function key. Most likely it's not on your screen and you're gonna to have to go down to modify and then go to parameters. I think if you click on the little buttons, you can pin it to the toolbar, but we're gonna hit parameters and we are gonna create a parameter. So we're gonna give it a name and we're gonna call this one length. Okay, and then we're gonna give it a, va a value. And in our case, we're just gonna simply start with two inches and I'll show you how it, it works later. And we go ahead and click OK. So this is gonna be a two inch cube and we are gonna use this two, if we change this two inch diameter, the model will automatically change wherever we use length in our dimensioning. So we're gonna go ahead and close this and we're gonna start a, a sketch on a part and we're simply gonna draw a center justified rank, rank square like we've done numerous other parts. But instead of typing in two inches or a value, we are gonna type in length. Now it'll automatically set that to two inches. We can go tab and go length up here too and hit enter. And you'll notice it says it's a function of two inches. So if I go into, let's just say finish sketch really quickly, just to show you. If I go into parameters and I change this to, let's say 1.75 inches and click okay, and then go back into this sketch, you'll notice that it automatically changed size. So this will allow us to manipulate the size of this cube very easily by just changing one number. The complexity here is that you're gonna to have to make all of the dimensions some sort of uh, equation based around that number for the most part. So we're gonna hit finish sketch, we're gonna hit extrude, and we are gonna say the extrude distance is, wait for it, length. And you can obviously make more um, than one, more than one uh, parameter, so you can change different things in different ways. Um, like if you were gonna make a candy bar, you can change its length, its width, and its thickness if you want by making those three parameters. But we go ahead and click OK. Now what we are gonna do on the top is we are gonna create, oops, I forgot one step. I made a mistake on the extrusion. Edit feature. Traditionally, we've extruded it one way. Now we are gonna use circular patterning to help, uh, or yeah, circular patterning to help us make this. And it makes it easier if we use, instead of one-sided, symmetrical. And in symmetrical, we want the overall width. So basically we're taking that square we drew and extruding out, in this case, one and, or like one, I don't know, 0.875 in both directions. So we'll go ahead and click okay. I'm gonna go back up here and quickly change this function back to two because it's easier to do the math. So when I did that last thing, it basically extruded one inch on each side. So we're gonna pick one of the surfaces, the top will work. We're gonna draw a circle. Now the trick with this circle is, it is a function of length. So it's gonna be length divided by 1.25. And that means that circle will stay the same relative size to the cube, no matter how big or small I make the cube. We're now gonna hit finish sketch and extrude and we are gonna extrude this to a negative value of length divided by, oops, I need to, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, it doesn't like the capital. Length divided by 
And if I click OK, now we get that thing. And if we change the size, let's just say we go to three inches, you'll notice the part shouldn't really change. It's three inches now, but the ratio of everything expanded uniformly because all of it has a factor of length. So let's go ahead now. We're going to use circular patterning. So pattern circular. We are going to pattern uh, a feature, and that features this extrusion. And the axis, if and figure out the axis. Well, I could look over here, and I know it's going to be the y-axis. So we need to choose the y-axis for our uh, axis, that one there. And let's turn the body back on, and we can see we want four of them. And if we click OK, you'll notice that it suddenly created four of those around the pattern. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a circle here. So this is length uh, divided by 1.25, divided by 1.25. There we go. And we can now go extrude, and we're going to extrude it to the same depth, which is length divided by 4.75. And um, this all needs to be a negative, so I'm going to put a negative in front of it. And we can cut it. Now, what we need to do now is we want to put one over on the other side of this. And the other tool we can use is what's called mirror, which there's mirror within the sketch and there's mirror within the feature. Um, we are going to use, I believe it's under modify. Where's mirror? There it is. Mirror is right here, so we're going to go ahead and click mirror. We are going to select a feature to mirror, which is this feature. And then we are going to select the mirror plane, which I'm going to select that plane right in there. And you'll notice that it puts it on the other side. And now we have a fully functional and fully uh, parametered part. So I can change its size from uh, to 13 inches. And you can see it suddenly got massively bigger, but it looks exactly the same. Or I can make it uh, 0.3 of an inch, and you can see that it shrunk down to some little box that is right there. Parameters are hugely powerful because they can really help you simplify designs when you need to make multiple sizes of them. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. We're going to call this week 10 parameters. and your last name. Welcome back, Fusion Monday, uh, week 10, part two. This is uh, the culminating assignment in at least the modeling phase of Fusion Mondays, and this is where we're gonna show you how to put together multiple parts into one drawing. So in this case, we need two different parts, a candy mold and a the candy bar, and then we're gonna use the candy bar to actually remove out so we have a mold so if we were making this in real life we can then pour like chocolate into the mold um, or press in like cookie dough so that we get um, what we want so let's hop over to fusion monday and get started so the first thing we need to understand is we're going to save this one to start and this is kind of an important step and we're going to call this candy so it's going to be week 10 candy and your last name and we're going to hit save now we want to make two separate parts that are separated from each other in uh, the, this one file. So what we have to do is if we right click on the name here, we're gonna write new component. And that component's gonna be called mold. And we're gonna click okay. And we are then gonna go ahead and start a sketch. Notice that the mold has the little checkbox next to it. That means that's the, what we're making, we're drawing the mold. And in our case, this is a very simple part it is simply a rectangle that is three inches long. I'm sorry, two, uh, two inches wide and three inches long. And we're going to extrude it to one inch. And that is our candy mold. And we can go ahead and hit save. Now, we are going to make a second part within this environment. So we are going to go up here and create a new component. And that component is going to be called candy. Is this is the candy bar we're going to make that we're then going to turn, use to cut out the mold. So we go ahead and click OK. We're going to turn off the mold, which is fine. You can't see it. It still exists, but it's gone away typically. Clearly, I can't spell candy, but we'll fix that later. And we're going to start a sketch. 
And it is important that you keep that in mind. Like if we look at the mold, we're in the right spot. In this case though, the mold, we have to, we're looking at the candy bar from the bottom. So we're gonna draw a, oh, I made a mistake. I made the sketch in the wrong spot. Um, so we can go ahead and why don't I fix this? There we go. Now we need to turn the mold back on temporarily and we are gonna start a sketch on the pro, we have to make the profile of the candy bar. So I want the sketch on that blue plane. There we go. I'm gonna turn off the mold temporarily. So we are gonna go line and the candy bar is going to be one inch by uh, one inch wide. So we're gonna go up 0.5 of an inch. Oops, 0.5 of an inch. And now I'm gonna zoom in. And then we are gonna have a line and we're gonna go up 0.1 because the edge is gonna be straight. And then it's gonna have a curved top with an embossed logo. So I'm gonna then do a construction line right here. And I am then going to go to create arc. Come on, there we go, three point arc. From here, not in construction, so I had to turn that off to here and then I'm gonna drag it out. And then I am going to put a dimension on this arc of a one inch radius. There we go. Now, um, I'm gonna make a quick construction line here that comes off at point one and I'm gonna make this radius and this uh, tangent. So now we have half of a arced candy bar. And in the last Fusion Monday, we talked about mirroring um, two circles in the feature, you can also mirror within the sketch. So I'm going to hit mirror and I'm going to select this line, this line, and this line. And my mirror line is here. And you notice that we mirrored um, the candy bar so that we now have a curved top candy bar in the sketch. So we can go ahead and finish extrude and we're going to hit E. And we are going to use, once again, symmetrical. And the candy bar is going to be 2.25 inches long um, in overall length. So this would be on one side. This would be overall. So the mold is 3. This is 2.25. We have a little bit. So we go ahead and click OK. The next step we are going to do is we are going to put a tangent plane going back to our planes. And on the top here, we are then going to create a sketch on the plane. We are going to make text. Oops. We are going to create text. And I'm going to make a box right here. And my words are going to be, if I can get it to come out, candy. Um, I use this. The size is obviously going to have to come down, maybe 0.5. Um, let's take a look. It ain't going to fit at 0.5, so I'm going to go um, 0.375. There we go. That'll, that'll work reasonably well, centered and centered. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to do another construction line from the corner here to the corner there. And then make uh, the midpoint of this line and that point coexist. And there we go. Now I can go ahead and emboss this. So I'm going to go finish sketch, create emboss, and I'm going to select here. And I'm going to have it come up, and the face is going to be off this. And we're going to go ahead and do um, 0.05 is fine. So now we have a mold. We're going to do a couple of cleanup things. We are going to put some fillets in the corner. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F and select these edges right here and here and do 0.2 and let's do 0.1. The drawing doesn't have that. Won't like 0.11. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And then we are gonna do a chamfer along this outer edge of 0.03. And we now have a candy bar that looks reasonably nice um, for this candy. Now the trick is we need to now basically use this candy bar to subtract from the mold. If I turn on the mold, you're going to notice that, oh wait, 
they're both there kind of together in the thing. Now, in Fusion, you can assemble parts. And we're going to learn that in weeks 11 through 15, where we talk about how to put things together. So today, I'm going to show you just a brief touch on how you can put these two together so that we can make the mold correctly. So if we notice, candy has been is the active thing we're modeling. So we're modeling on the candy bar. If we click on mold and click on the box, now we will be modeling on the mold. If we go up here, this allows us to modify them the relationship they have to each other. So if you notice, I can grab this candy bar and move it out of the mold. And what we need to do is we need to put them together the way we want. So what, the way you do that is you go to join, which is under assembly. It also has a quick key called J. And what you're gonna do is you are gonna, oops, I forgot one step. So I gotta hit cancel. The first step we gotta do is we gotta what's called ground. We, one of the, right now, both pieces will move, see? So I'm gonna go undo and bring that one back. I need to ground one. Say, hey, this one can't move anymore. So the mold is what we're gonna ground. So I'm gonna right click on uh, mold and I'm gonna hit ground. Now, if I try to move the mold, I can't move it. I can still move the candy bar, but I can't move the mold. So what I'm gonna do now is move the candy bar to the mold. And I'm gonna do that by going into join and I'm gonna select Notice it has all these possible points on the bottom. We're gonna select the bottom center of the candy bar and the bottom center of the mold. And it's gonna flip it over in a way I don't want to. That's okay. If we scroll down here to this blue button called flip, we can flip it. We also can move, make it find adjustments in the movements here, but we'll learn more about that in the future. We go ahead and click okay. Now they're put together and I can't move them. I think we need to be up here. So we're going to go combined, and it says select the target body. That would be the mold. Select the target tool. That would be the candy bar. And then do we want to join them? No, we want to cut them. And then it says, do we want to keep the new component? Do we want to keep the tool? We're just going to click OK, and you'll notice that there is a mold now for that candy bar. So this is a way to use uh to make molds of different shape objects later next year in sim we talk about having to make soft jaws and this is a way to do it and now we have a candy bar that we could mold that we could pour any candy in and it would make the shape that we want thanks for watching i hope you learned something and i'll catch you in the next one